What is going on, Dolphins fans? Jacob here. Miami Dolphins Syndicate. Draft is right around the corner, and as always when it comes to the draft, the most exciting position on the field outside of quarterback is the wide receiver position, and the Miami Dolphins could very likely add another wide receiver to the current core of Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. So what we got for you guys today is the top five wide receivers I could see the Miami Dolphins drafting. This is not necessarily the five best players in the draft at the wide receiver position. However, given where the Miami Dolphins select and given the players that would likely be available at those picks, these are the five guys that I think the Miami Dolphins could end up selecting come the NFL draft. So for my first two guys, these are for both for the first pick that the Miami Dolphins have in the first round. And my first guy is Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. Dude was an absolute monster last year for LSU. 68 catches, 100 or 1177 yards, 17 touchdowns. He scored once every four times that he caught the ball last year. He is a, a very do-it-all wide receiver for LSU, and in many years, he would be the number one wide receiver taken off the board. This is just such a wide receiver deep class this year that sees him going likely at the end of the first round. I doubt he escapes into the second round, and there's a good chance he might not even be available to us once our pick comes in the 20s. However, if he is available... This is a very realistic opportunity for the Dolphins to add their wide receiver three and a potential long-term replacement for Tyreek Hill once he is ends up uh, either retiring or leaving at the end of his contract. Brian Thomas Jr., you're looking at somebody six foot three, 210 pounds. I like that combination, which allows both physicality and speed, and you do see that. With, with Brian Thomas Jr., he excels at both contested catches as well as being able to get over the top and blow past his defenders. Uh, ran a 4 3 3 40, which was in the 95 percentile. Uh, and is also, we like I just mentioned, was also seen this, this last season. Uh, work on his game, uh, being able to get pinpoint balls in the air. Two specific times that I was just watching before making this video that got to see him uh, pinpoint a ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Uh, was a fade route both to the left side and the right side in the end zone. Uh, once against Ole Miss and once against Mississippi State. And the one against Mississippi State required a lot of physicality to battle against the, the defender going against him there. Uh, he is great uh, getting off the line of scrimmage quick in all aspects of the game. Runs away from the defenders with the ball. But it's something that he can still work on a little bit more with that separation. But once he already has the ball, but that's something you get when you have those guys that are in the middle of both quick and physical I like the frame, I like the size, I like the ability that I saw there with LSU. LSU just constantly turning out receivers, and if you look at his first two seasons, there's not a lot going on. That's just because how the pecking order goes at LSU. Once you finally get your opportunity, most often the time you shine, and that's what we saw with Brian Thomas Jr. So much to like about this guy. Physicality, speed, route running. The one thing that has come into question when it comes to Brian Thomas Jr. is sometimes he lacks a little bit of focus. That's often the case so many times because of just he was that much better than the competition on the other side of the ball. I think he'd be an excellent selection with Miami Dolphins first pick in the first round. So my second guy that would likely require the Miami Dolphins to select them in the first round if we do go with him would be A.B. or Adonai Mitchell out of the University of Texas. Definitely somebody who is more in tune with what the Miami Dolphins currently have. I mentioned how Brian Thomas is both quick and physical. AD is definitely more on the speedster area when it comes to wide receivers. He is both quick and fast. He runs an excellent slant route, which is something that could be nice pairing up with Tua. Those timing routes on the, the shorter to intermediate area of the field. That is something that we saw Adonai Mitchell excel at as well as he has a really good vertical jump. 39.5 in the combine, which is the 91st percentile. Ran a 4.34 40-yard dash, which is just 1 100th of a second slower than we saw from Brian Thomas Jr. That's good for the 94th percentile. Uh, but the best metric that we saw from him out of the combine was his broad jump, which was good for second in NFL history amongst wide receivers at 136 inches, only behind Chris Connolly, one inch better than what we saw from Julio Jones when he came out from Alabama. Like I already mentioned, he has that, that combination of both speed and and quickness can break off the line very quickly get around his defender as well as has the ability to to take on his defender deep down the field uh, a lot of times uh, we had a few different quarterbacks at texas and we saw a consistent trait from no matter who it was is oftentimes he had to wait on the ball 
uh, when he was going for a deep shot over the top because of how quick he was. There were times where he was waiting on that, as well as there was times where he overjumped a jump ball opportunity, which we saw against uh, University of Washington in the semifinal game, the, the touchdown that made the game a little bit closer in the fourth quarter. Ultimately, it obviously didn't matter with the game. Washington goes on to win anyways, uh, but he overjumps the ball in the right corner of the end zone, still able to come down with it, but that's just the type of athlete. He can outrun the quarterback as well as outjump wherever the ball is thrown to. Uh, very smooth routes for his speed. Uh, the, the one downside, or the, I guess a few downsides, is his, his physicality, where if you're doing a jump ball with a more physical receiver, that's something that can be a little bit of a worry where it comes to them, as well as blocking on the line of scrimmage and deep downfield. Only 195 pounds uh, does not have the, the best ability to, to mark up with uh, the man that he's trying to block, as well as his hands aren't the biggest, only 9-inch hands, which we're talking about these 91, 94 uh, in 100 percentiles when it comes to some of his other statistics. 9-inch hands is in the 31st percentile when it comes to wide receiver prospects. Uh, but if you can get him in the first round, I still think he's an excellent wide receiver option. He's not perfect. That's why he's likely to be the fourth or fifth guy off the board. But with the speed that he can bring to this offense, with all the other speed that we have on this team, would just fit in so seamlessly into this Miami Dolphins offense. So third on this list, a guy that is going to fall into day two, likely into the second round. And if we pass on him, there's a likelihood he can even fall into the third round. However, I like what he can add to this offense. And that's Xavier Leggett out of the University of South Carolina. We talked about Brian Thomas Jr. and his combination of speed and physicality. And then we talked about Adonine Mitchell and his pure speed and quickness that he adds to an NFL roster. Xavier Leggett, you're finding the opposite of that. You're finding a more physical specimen than you would in uh, definitely Adonai Mitchell. Uh, more comparable with Brian Thomas with his frame and physicality. Coming in at six foot one, 221 pounds, which is the 90th percentile when it comes to weight from a wide receiver in the NFL draft. He still has some good speed to him. 4-3-9 40 is nothing to scoff at. It is a 500th of a second drop off from what we see from both Adonai Mitchell and Brian Thomas. And it's crazy to think that that 500th of a second is as big of a difference as it is. Uh, when you look at Adonai, who is in the 94th percentile, you look at Brian Thomas, who's the 95th percentile, and then you have Brian Thomas, who is in the 86th percentile when it comes to 40 yard dashes. But that 500th of a second, that's how much of a difference it makes. And that 500th of a second could be the difference of a touchdown or an incomplete pass or even an interception. So what he does bring, like I mentioned, is physicality. Uh, he is able to catch contested balls, catch jump balls, catch balls in traffic in both zone and against man. Strong catcher of the ball all over the field. Very physical, very physical wide receiver, both in his approach to catching the ball as well as for a college wide receiver has got a lot of scouts raving over his ability to block so just all around, scouts are loving his ability to use his hands, both to catch the ball in space when it's when it's contested, as well as when the ball isn't coming his way in the play. Uh, he's able to get outside, get a block, seal block around the edge. And for college wide receivers, that is something that's very impressive. He lacks speed. He lacks a little bit of quickness, that initial burst off the line that we see from Adonai Mitchell. Uh, and another red flag when it comes to Xavier Leggett is what he produced in college. He's coming off of his fifth year in college football. The previous two guys I mentioned did all their work in three years and excelled. Both the two of them excelled in their third year. Xavier Leggett is coming off of his fifth year. He's going to be 23 years old when the season starts, which obviously by no means is old for the NFL or old for a draft prospect. But he is amongst the older guys coming in. As well as if you look what he did the previous four seasons, you would say this is a guy that's not even worthy to be drafted. This last year, his fifth year, 71 catches, 1,255 yards, seven, or yeah, seven touchdowns, 17.7 yards per reception, which is fantastic. But before that, his high was 18 catches, 167 yards, and three touchdowns. So he had four years of very little production in college football, but he's coming off of this excellent 1,255-yard season on 71 catches and seven touchdowns, where he played fantastic with a you know a very good quarterback who is going to be drafted in Spencer Rattler. So it makes sense. You get a good quarterback, you start to improve. 
There still are question marks about him, but what I do like is the ability to change up what the Miami Dolphins have as options in the wide receiver game. It's so speed-based, smaller guys, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, our bigger body guy is Eric Azukama, who, yeah, comes in at 6'3", 6'4", but dude is not much over 200 pounds if he is at all. 221 pounds from Xavier Leggett gives you the ability to be a little bit more physical in the passing game. It allows you to not just think of timing as when is Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle going to be open. You can think of the timing offense that we like to run with our passing game with Xavier Leggett is instead of having to have him be open, which is something that Tua has struggled with when it comes to pairing with wide receivers who can't get open on their own. But it does give that extra option with Xavier the get that you feel more confident with him to catch a ball over the middle of the field in a contested catch when you're potentially you know throwing the ball into a very small zone. Instead of having to hit where he's wide open, Leggett can put himself in position to be more physical than the guys around him and make those contested catches, which is something that I really like that he could add to this Miami Dolphins offense. So these last two guys that I selected are now later on in the draft. Brian Thomas, Adonai Mitchell, and Xavier Leggett are all day one and day two guys. These next two guys are all but likely going to be day three guys in this draft and in many ways are light versions of what we've seen in the previous three receivers. And this first guy that I'm gonna go over is Brendan Rice from USC, the USC over on the West Coast, University of South uh, California. Uh, Brendan Rice notably is the son of arguably the greatest wide receiver in NFL history, Jerry Rice, coming in at six foot two, 208 pounds. That's very comparable to what we've seen Brian Thomas, six foot three, 210 pounds. Both are wide receivers that have played with, I'd say, the two best quarterback prospects in this draft. Brian Thomas got to play with Jane Daniels, who's somebody that I absolutely love at the quarterback position. And then Brendan Rice, obviously, notably getting to play with Caleb Williams, who is going to be the number one pick in this draft, guaranteed. Uh, in his last season in college football, 45 catches, 795, 791 yards, and 12 touchdowns. He got in the end zone a lot, as well as his, his yards per reception uh, it was high at a number that I like, 17.6. You break down the physical nature of him in, in some of his, his grades and in, in rankings at the Combine, and you understand why he's going later on here in the draft. His 40 was about dead middle of the road, 4.5 flat in the 51 percentile. Nothing really jumps off the page when it comes to his physicality. His shuttle run wasn't good. His broad jump was bad. His bench was bad. And then everything else, again, middle of the road, the 10-yard, the vertical, the three-cone drills, his height, his weight are even just slightly above average. There's a lot of good, but not a lot of great when it comes to Brendan Rice. He does have that Hall of Fame acumen from his family in, in his father, Jerry Rice, and just potentially having that as an asset to just have that in his ear and potentially, you know, maybe see Jerry Rice work around with some other Miami Dolphins wide receivers. That is never a bad thing. He is neither very quick nor very physical, but he is a combination of both, like Brian Thomas, like we mentioned earlier. Just does pretty much everything that Brian Thomas does, just at a slightly less level or significantly less level even in some cases but you're not drafting this guy with day one or day two capital you're looking at your sixth round picks you're looking at your seventh round picks and i'm comfortable with taking brendan rice at those selections and finally another guy who like i keep saying is similar to the other guys that i've scouted earlier on in this video and has a lot of similarities also coming from a big school fresh off the national championship game cornelius johnson out of the university of michigan so one of the things that went against Cornelius Johnson, because if you look at his, his stats of what he did last year, it does not scream somebody who you are excited to get ready to draft. Uh, the Michigan Wolverines offense was so rushing oriented. It, there was a run first offense and they've, the NFL and the NFL scouts have found a way to talk themselves into Michigan's quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, but not really much their wide receiver core, who was also held back by the fact that Michigan was so run predicated. And you look at Cornelius Johnson, who is currently, again, he's currently projected to be a sixth or a seventh round pick. You look at his stats last year, not good. 44 catches, 579 yards, only one touchdown. That's 32, or sorry, that's 13.2 
yards per reception. But you look at some of his physical numbers, and they're better than Brendan Rice, and they're better than some of the some of the marks from guys that are also going on earlier in the draft. Some of these are also better than what we see from from Blake Corum, who is potentially or not Blake Corum, Roman Wilson rather, who is going to be going much earlier on in the draft. His broad jump, 127 uh, inches, good in the 85th percentile. Vertical jump, 37.5. That is just two inches shorter than what we saw from Ad Mitchell. Six foot three, 212 pounds. I love that frame for a wide receiver. Six foot three, 210 for Brian Thomas. Nearly identical. I'm guessing you're, you guys are catching a theme here. I like the height with just a little bit of weight, a little bit over 200 pounds. I like the six three, the 210. That's what I like for a guy uh, coming into this Miami Dolphins team when you already have Tyreek Hill, who's five foot ten, you know, 190 something pounds and change, 200 something pounds and change. I don't know off the top of my head. If I got that wrong, go ahead and kill me in the comments. Uh, I like the ability to go out and get somebody who has a little more size, a little more physicality, and a guy that has potential to have a much better career than what we saw from him in college, going from a run first offense to a pass first offense down here in Miami. Gives us some some versatility at the wide receiver position. Is physical, is athletic. What we see with his with his markings. Another thing similar to Adonai Mitchell, small hands, eight and five eighths of an inch hands is in the 17th percentile amongst wide receivers. And his shuttle run was also pretty poor at 4.37, which is in the 19th percentile. However, everything else, especially for a seventh round pick, I really like. Is coming off of a national championship, has success, has found success in college football, and God knows this Miami Dolphins roster and just needs an influx of guys that have experience at high levels, even though he is going to be a rookie this year, and who knows how much he actually plays. Getting as much successful experience in the building would be something that is only beneficial to this Miami Dolphins team, no matter what they actually do on the field. So that is my five guys that I think the Miami Dolphins are most likely to select at the wide receiver position. Again, this is not the top five guys in the entire NFL draft. I'm not talking about Marvin Harris. I'm not talking about Roma Dunze and Malik Neighbors. Those guys are likely all going in the top 10, and I don't realistically see the Miami Dolphins trading up to that point to select a wide receiver when you already arguably have the top two or the top wide receiver duo in this league. I like the Dolphins to be able to sit put where they're at if they're looking to address wide receiver position and draft any of Ryan Thomas, Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Leggett, Cornelius Johnson, and Brendan Rice. I like those guys. I like some more than others. And we'll see how these guys fare off when it comes to the NFL draft and when it comes to their NFL careers. And we'll see what happens if the Miami Dolphins select any of these guys. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think of the guys that I mentioned here today, as well as there, are there any wide receiver prospects that you could realistically see the Miami Dolphins bring into this team. I don't want to go down the comments. You see, see Marvin Harrison Jr. It's not happening. The other two guys that are going in the top 10, it's not happening. But guys that you could realistically see the Miami Dolphins bring in at the wide receiver position, let me know down below in the comments. While down there, hit the like button. Hit the sub button. Appreciate y'all very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Go Dolphins.